Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Keo Daiken. In uh, today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 512 gigabyte Nostalgia Trip V2 by Damaso. So this is a second version that he put out, which is 512 uh, gigabytes. And I do believe the original size is somewhere around 420, maybe 380, I believe, if you um, extract it, uh, the actual image size itself, which is a really great job. So um, I've decided to go ahead and review some of the other uh, uh, Pi image makers in the community just to kind of see and give you guys a showcase of what their skill set is and what they have to offer. So let's go ahead and get into this review. This is Keo Daiken. The Muscles put out a number of Pi images uh, recently for the Pi 4. Uh, this particular image he put out has 9,258 games on here. Uh, this particular image I am reviewing is made for the Pi 4B only. It is not made for the 8 gigabyte model. It will not work on the new Pi 400. And it is an SD card you need to use. You cannot use a USB drive or a uh, USB SATA connection or SSD with this particular image. Uh, currently I am using, uh, obviously I'm using my RetroPie or Pi 4 gigabyte, uh, four gigabyte uh, unit and I am using a Samsung 512 uh, card. I believe that card cost me about a hundred bucks. Didn't have it in the store, it took a couple of days to get it. So let's take a look at this, 9,258 games. Do we have any favorites in here? He has a number of favorites in here as well, 17 favorites. He has uh, 1,200 arcade games, 141 Neo Geo, which is pretty much the entire set. Thomas Wave 17, that's about almost the entire set. I believe there's like 23 uh, Thomas Wave games. Uh, Naomi 30, Daphne 10, 10 out of uh, 16 capable games you can run for Daphne, so it's a nice set. 209 Beats of Rage games. And I do believe with this particular set, you don't need to use a mouse or keyboard to set up your controllers uh, with that. Atari 2600, Atari 78, Nintendo Game & Watch, Family Computer, uh, Family Disc, you have Nintendo and uh, Nintendo Hacks, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo CD. Super Nintendo CD will give you better audio quality with the games that you do play. So that's a nice looking set there. Super Nintendo Hacks. You also have Stella View, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Virtual Boy, Neo Geo CD, Neo CD, uh, Geo CD Pocket Color, PC Engine, CD-ROM, Tur Turbo Graphics 16, Super Graphics, PC FX, 3DO, uh, PlayStation. So um, out of a total of 700 PlayStation games, he added 268. So he probably went through there and picked out his favorites and the ones that um, are probably some of the top tier favorites for the PlayStation series. PlayStation Portable, Minis, SG-1000, Master System, Sega Genesis, and Sega Genesis Hacks, Game Gear, Sega 32X, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and Dreamcast. So these are all the sets here, and I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is running on, I believe this particular image is running off of Supreme Beta 4. I believe it is. I have to double check. But um, you guys all know I do a lot of the reviews for Supreme. So let's take a look and see what we have in here. We have Supreme Tools. We have the online kit. You have Show Your IP, RetroPie, uh, video loading screens. There should be some loading screens in here. You can overclock. You also have, so you have all the normal scripts that you would see on a regular Supreme base build. And I believe this particular base was put out back in, if this is the base that I'm thinking it is, I do believe this base was put out somewhere around October or, or November of last year. So it's about a year old, but it's a really good uh, base uh, that he has here. So let's take a look at some of the things that he has added. Um, I don't see any collections here. You guys can add that for yourself. And so... Let's see, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, NES, Beats of Rage, Daphne. 
there's something I want to show you guys. Let's go take a look. I want to see what kind of arcade games we have in here. Let's take a look at X-Men. Let's see. Sometimes some images will have uh, the six-player, four-player, and two-player. Okay, so he has the X-Men four-player game on here. So I don't see the two-player or the six. This is something that I like to look for myself. And then, of course, Ninja Turtles. So I do believe he has both versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in here. He has uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then, of course, he has Ninja Tur Turtles in Time, uh, which is on here as well. And uh, from looking at this, it looks like he also has both versions. You have the standard two-player, and you also have the four-player games of each set, which is pretty awesome. But all in all, uh, the Mazel gives you a, a really nice combination of things to look for here. Uh, when you're getting an image, it's nice and perfectly scraped. Um, you have all your video snaps. You have all of your box art, uh, which is available. Let's go ahead and boot up a game. We'll see how all of these really compare. And just give you guys a little bit idea of some of the performance. Now, uh, a Thomas Wave and the Naomi games, they're still using the Flycast simulator, whereas the Sega system, uh, Sega Redream is using, uh, that is using a Redream. So if you guys can watch some of my other tutorials, I have a playlist on everything dating back to the Pi 4 since RetroPie has been running on it. And um, if you guys also want to try to get better performances uh, as you have on, let's say, uh, some of the newer images like a 007 and whatnot, you can delete the bezel script and the bezel script will usually give you better performance. I know it does on the 3B+. So if you delete the bezel script, not only will that save you some space, I think that is about... 50 i think it's 50 50 gigs i want to say is the whole the entire bezel project so um, if you delete that you'll save some space and then plus it'll also help with the pi emulation performance as well in addition to that uh, you could also lower your resolution on your pi 4 to 720 uh the 720 uh, 10, uh 1280 uh, 720p so you get better performance because it takes the pi or it causes the pi to work harder when you're emulating at 1080p, which is something like a Wolfenos has done. And some of the things that you guys have seen me review on my previous uh, re review videos, the, that you will get better performance if you do uh, lower the resolution. Now, Damaso is available if you guys have any questions. He is in some of the groups that we are affiliated with as far as RetroPie Official and several other ones. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel called Tabs Damaso if you guys have any questions or want him to uh, take a look at any, uh, if you have any questions or concerns that you need to uh, ask him. Or if you have any suggestions as far as any future images. Now, if you are using this for a RK 1UP unit, I do suggest something like this. Uh, this is a really good image because it has all the ROMs that you do need, um, especially some of the newer ones that the Pi 3B Plus cannot run. So, like these Naomi games and a Thomas Wave games uh, have really good graphics on them, and I'm glad that uh, the Pi 4 can run these. And on this image, you'll get a fluid, fluid playability with combos, and uh, reaction time uh, that you'll get on the image without any lag or without uh, any input delays. Pretty cool. Nice.
Now, typically before I even do my reviews, I double check to see if I'm overclocked. So I do believe this uh, image is running at stock settings. So let's just back out really quick and we're gonna double check that. And let's go to system info and weather. And right now I am at uh, 47 degrees Celsius. Okay, so yeah, I was right. So um, this particular uh, build or image is using 380 gigabytes out of a possible 471 gigabytes. Now I mentioned this when I did Wolfenos's uh, image review the other day that it really makes me wonder why image makers try to push the barriers or the boundaries of what a SD card can really hold. Um, Damaso is really good at this. It's keeping it down to where it will fit on all cards. So for example, if you look at that partition size, you'll see underneath the 253, it says 471 gigabytes. I am using a 512 gigabyte SD card. So as you guys all know, this isn't anything new. When you get a hard drive or SD card, you always know that you're getting a little bit less in size than what is on the box. So in this particular case, you have a 512 gigabyte SD card, which is ha uh, has a full capacity of 471 gigabyte actual space. And I've seen Pi images recently where the image it claims is 500 gigabyte image, but the actual file size of that RetroPie image is somewhere around 480. And I don't understand why people do that. So, and then of course, you try to go get a card that'll fit this, and you can't run this image because the person didn't take into account the actual available size for an SD card. So if you're ever in the market to make your own image eventually, you always wanna keep it at least 7% under. Now, Damaso did a, a little bit more than uh, 7%, and he's actually in a really good spot, I, honestly, 380. So yeah, I probably would've pushed it to about 410, whatever the case might be, 390, 380, but 380 is a really good you know, spot because you wanna make sure you have enough uh, cash there and enough space so it can um, expand on the drive itself. And then of course, you need to also account for errors and pie shrinking and all those other kind of things. So even though it can hold 470 or it claims it can hold 471 gigabytes, yeah, you wanna make sure that you at least leave uh, some margin, margin for error even between that actual number and whatever you're building. So just FYI. Uh, so you got all your splash screen randomizers, you have everything here. But other than that, this is a really good image if you guys are using this for an arcade build or whatever your hobby project might be. Uh, 512 gigabytes is not too big, honestly. I think the only hassle is trying to find 512 gigabyte cards. Uh, they usually aren't carried by, um, what's the name of that place? Uh, Micro Center or Best Buy, you have to special order, which is unfortunate. So as of right now in the Pi community, I think the sweet spot uh, for a Pi image uh, is 256. Um, that is the sweet spot overall for either a Pi 3 or or a 3 or a, I'm sorry, a 3B plus or a Pi 4. But I believe the actual sweet spot for a Pi 4 preferably would be a 256 because obviously 128 was a really decent size, a good size for the 3B plus. And then of course migrating to the Pi 4 uh, and having additional systems and uh, games you can run to take advantage of the power, then yeah, you wanna make sure you at least get a 256 gigabyte card and you can get a Samsung Evo for about 50 bucks. And those are my, or you can get a uh, SanDisk Ultra for almost around the same price. So I wanna take a look at some of the other performances here. Let's see if uh, he did any optimizations for Nintendo 64. And uh, please keep in mind, this one's gonna be a little different than what you currently see. This image, like I said, is probably, well, the base is probably about a year old. So uh, you won't see all the performances that you would have may have seen in more of my recent videos, because those are obviously a lot newer. So let me see if GoldenEye is even on here. Okay. 
So he actually did a good job. I mean, GoldenEye wouldn't run on this base full speed anyway. So what Demasso really does is he makes sure he adds games that will run at 100%. So that saves you time, saves you money, and makes sure that you're getting something that's going to run fluid all the way around. So again, guys, uh, this is Kill Dyke, and make sure you uh, like, subscribe to this channel. Consider subscribing or joining my Patreon so I can help you guys grow the community. I have a lot of other projects that we're going to take a look at, but all in all, this is one of the images where you know you download, and if you need a good ROM set and you need to pull from it, then you can. Uh, everything is perfectly scraped for you. Everything is there. So I know a lot of you have had problems using a Scraper or some of the other programs. But you can always do that with an image like this, and uh, it's really good. Um, one of the things I do think I probably would have added, I think he, I mean, he would have had enough room to add Atari 5200, so that just caught my eye right here. But all in all, this is a great image. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, taking a look at what he has to offer on here. Um, and also, as you notice, uh, there's no... Uh, thermal tem uh, thermal temperatures or anything uh, on this particular build. I do know in a previous video, I do believe it was this particular image where there was a thermometer showing up that it was uh, overheating, and that's not the case. And all Supreme builds run at about 45 degrees Celsius anyway, even without any heat sink or any fan. And um, yeah, so that was pretty strange. But it's fine. You guys won't have any issues, no lightning bolt issues, anything like that. So um, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you check out my other videos and the playlist. Catch you guys later. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.